Hi everyone, today's video is about principal component analysis or PCA as you've probably heard it called. So PCA is used when you have many features in your data set. Oftentimes as humans it's easier for us to see clusters or patterns and so when you have many features or dimensions in your analyses this can first of all make it more difficult to visualize and second of all it can decrease a model's accuracy. So PCA can help our eyes to work less and it can help us to avoid overfitting. In technical terms, PCA is an ordination method, a linear ordination method specifically, that as I mentioned is used for dimensionality reduction and it does so by creating linear combinations. You can think of it as a new subspace of principal components that focus on shared variables which means that it tries to summarize multiple variables in the minimum number of components so that each component explains the most variance. And by maximizing variance in the data, you are then minimizing distance between your fitted lines and the observations, and therefore you're minimizing error. Let's consider this example. If you had 15 individuals in your data set, and you were measuring two bacteria that were found in the feces of these 15 individuals, and you wanted to see how correlated these two bacteria were, then that's easy enough, right? But what happens when we want to look at more variables, more bacteria potentially? Then once you have three or more, it can become a little bit more challenging to visualize. So what PCA does is it converts correlations amongst these bacteria or your variables on a 2D frame and it creates highly correlated variables as clusters. So it clusters these together. Okay, now let's look at this in R. The first thing I will do is I will set my working directory and I will read in all of the libraries that we will need for today. I will read in the Verispec data from the vegan package and you'll see here that our columns are provided as species and our samples are provided as rows. I will also read in this categorical data frame here that I had created to accompany the Verispec data frame. And you'll see this at the end of the tutorial today where I will include these categorical variables in our plots. All right, now, Common practice is to check eligibility of any test or model that you are doing. For principal components, you want to look at correlations and the presence of zeros. Now what you can do is look at correlations of your overall data frame and then take the mean, but oftentimes you also want to look at these on a gradient level. And with zeros, there are several methods that you can use to adjust for the presence of many zeros. Now vegan already has this included as the Hillinger method right here. Now you'll see the scale and the center equal true. And this is important because you need to consider that your PCA directions will be highly sensitive to data scaling. So we need to make sure that our variables are on the same scale. If not, then as you see, we can scale our data. Now this is important because let's say you are measuring performance in two different ways and you had two different instruments by which you are measuring performance, then this will affect the results that we will get from PCA if they are not indicated to be on the same scale. So we'll go ahead and run this and you'll see that our principal components are listed in descending order right here with principal component 1 and principal component 2 explaining the most variability. Specifically around 20% and 12% of variability being explained by principal component 1 and 2. Now this function right here is if you wanted to extract the values only for the first two principal components in case that is easier for you to see and it presents this to you based on the species and the sites. Now you may also want to extract your eigenvalues and you can run this code right here. You may also wish again to only extract your eigenvalues for the first two principal components and you can do so as such. So let's take a look at these. These are all our principal components and then just the first two.
You can also extract results for your variables, you can extract your site scores, and then you can also visualize using a scree plot. So you'll see here again where our PC1 and PC2 explain most of the variability. And then we can look at a symmetrically scaled biplot with our arrows here with small angles to an axis being highly correlated with the axis. In the next part of the series, I will go into the PRCOM package, which is another way to compute principal components in R, and we will look at other visualization techniques, including ggplot2 and ggfortify, specifically including ellipses, labels, and grouped data. I hope this was helpful, and stay tuned for the next video.